I'm Sarah Smith, a horticulturalist here at Rogers Gardens, and let's talk about monarch butterflies. But more importantly, what we can do as gardeners to help with the monarch butterfly problem that we've been having. Since the 80s, the population has declined about 97%, uh, and it's being considered for the endangered species list here in Southern California. But there's a lot of stuff we can do as gardeners to help with that problem, to help boost up that population. And there's been a lot of different kind of information, conflicting information, uh, new things that we've kind of discovered. So I want to kind of help break that down for you. So that way we can boost that population of of the monarch butterfly, which is the state butterfly here in California. So let's break it down so that way you can understand how to help the problem and you can make sure you're doing the right thing. This plant I have here in my hands is milkweed. This is the exclusive food for all the monarch caterpillars in all of its various forms. Here in Southern California for a really long time, we've had the ability to get all different kinds of milkweed and the most popular one that was being planted was the tropical milkweed, which has the red, orange, hot pink, hot pretty colored flowers. Um, and what we've really learned over the past couple of years is that it actually is not a good plant to have in your garden garden. So being educated on the right type of milkweed to have and why this is the right type of milkweed to have, what I'm holding here is the California native milkweed, is really important. And make sure you spread the word so everybody knows because we were all trying our best to feed those little hungry caterpillars and slowly with research and a lot of different experimenting, we've learned that that's not a good thing to have in the garden in all the different kinds of forms. This is the California native milkweed. This is what's been growing here naturally on its own in the canyons and the hillsides for the monarchs. And it grows very differently than the typical milkweed that you're probably used to, which is the tropical milkweed. So let's break down how to take care of this, why this is the correct one to have in your garden. What we're doing here at Rogers Gardens, which is so amazing for all of you Southern California gardeners as well. And what you can do to educate your friends, your neighbors, everybody else you know uh, that are those butterfly lovers that are trying really hard to do the right thing. So let's learn about it together. So with all the growing evidence that we've been seeing amongst the scientific community, we're realizing what the problem is with the tropical milkweed. We are learning that in other states, it becomes a problem where it is messing up the migration of the monarchs because that milkweed never dies down. It stays up year round. So it's keeping them stuck in one place. Fortunately here in Southern California, that's not really a problem here for us. So it's not like the monarchs you probably read about in school where they migrate down from Canada down to Mexico. Ours stay pretty local. They don't really migrate too far. So that's not really the problem. Nonetheless, though, there is an issue with that tropical milkweed here in Southern California because it doesn't die back. So that is a problem. What winds up happening is it creates this debilitating kind of problem for them where there is a protozoa that grows on that milkweed and it builds up and builds up and builds up on the leaves and it doesn't die down so it never goes away. So that gets onto their bodies when they go to feed on it, lay their eggs on it, the adult ones, and when they hatch, what will often wind up happening is they will make their cocoon and they'll come out and maybe they'll be slightly deformed. Their wings won't fully unfurl out the way a regular monarch will, or it will be really weakened as it flies away. So that protozoa gets inside their body and slowly kills them. The other major issue is even if they're feeding on the right type of milkweed, say you've gotten rid of all of your tropical milkweed, you're doing the right thing, but your neighbor still has that tropical milkweed. So they will pass it around to each other. So our big goal here at Rogers is to make sure that everybody understands and hopefully we can wipe out the whole entire tropical milkweed here in Southern California because it's not the right one to grow here. So we're really hoping that everybody gets the knowledge and everybody really does the right thing here so that way this is not a problem anymore. So this is the right one that you want to grow. This is the one that's been growing here for thousands of years naturally on its own. This one will die back completely. It's a California native, so it's pretty easy to grow. Doesn't need a lot of fuss. It's something that's just growing naturally on the hillsides 
all by herself with no human help. So you wanna make sure you have it planted in the right place at home. So this is a Sclepsia vascularis. There's quite a few different uh, milkweeds here in Southern California that are natives. This is the one here in Southern California that really seems to do the best. It will die down completely, so do not panic. In the wintertime, you'll have nothing. Make sure you don't dig out the roots and it will come back with a vengeance. It's really, really a weed. <laughs> so it's an easy one to grow. Make sure it has really well draining soil. It really wants to have good full sun, but it will spread out through your garden, not from the seeds, not like the tropical one does. The tropical one the seeds blow around all over the place it grows everywhere this one actually grows from its roots and will grow tuberous roots underneath that will pop up in other spots eventually and kind of take over the garden in a nice way it has a really beautiful kind of pale pink flower it's kind of creamy white but it will completely die down for you in your garden so don't panic when that happens and then make sure that with this you also have something for the butterflies to eat because this is the exclusive food of the caterpillars but this is not something the butterflies eat so here you want to make sure that you have something for the babies but you also need something for the adults to snack on so here we do a really fun thing during the spring and winter time when the milkweed is available it's not available year-round you don't want it to be available year-round because you want it to be growing in your garden at the right time of year so we offer a really awesome butterfly box that has not only a milkweed in it but it has all the food for the adult butterflies as well so all those nectar plants to track them to your garden so they know that you have milkweed available in your garden for them to lay their eggs when it's time we don't want them laying their eggs year-round because that's not what they should be doing so we're trying really hard to mimic the natural cycle for the monarchs so we're not creating more problems by giving too much human interference. That's how we got here in the first place, so let's make sure we don't keep repeating that problem. So one thing that you'll notice here is that at Rogers Gardens, we've been trying to get away from some of those single-use plastics that's so prevalent in the nurseries. The plastic that most containers come in are not recyclable, so even though you're putting them into your recycling can at home, they're just going straight into the landfill because it's not something they can recycle. So we've been selling a lot of products in these material, recycled material bags. Um, also sometimes they'll come in almost like a paper type container you should pull them out of these you're not going to plant them in this and then this way you can throw it away and they're going to decompose which is a really fantastic thing one thing you can do instead of throwing those uh, plastic containers into your recycling can or just into your regular can at home because it will definitely go into landfill is you can bring them back here and they can take them back to the nurseries and reuse them so that's really important that's even better than recycling anyways is just reusing those containers and for all of the containers that you bring in we donate a certain amount to the surf rider foundation as well so you can feel really good about that and not feel so bad about all those single-use plastics that you we wind up building up here at the nursery and we wind up building up at home with all the plants that you buy so just bring them back here we will reuse them and money will be donated to the surf rider foundation or if you see things in these beautiful little paper or material uh, containers you just take them out of that and you can throw those in the trash and they do decompose over time. One of the most amazing things that we do here at Rogers Gardens, and we've been doing it for quite a few years now, is when we have supply of it, because it's not a year round thing, remember that, even though you may have the wrong one growing in your garden with those red or yellow or orange or hot pink flowers, uh, this is not something available year round because it is uh, something that goes dormant. But when supplies last, you can bring in one of your tropical milkweeds roots and all hopefully you're pulling out all of yours they're all going straight into the trash but bring one in to us and we will give you a free California native one to start with so you may be looking around your garden thinking gosh I have a ton of plants what am I gonna do pull all these out and not have anything so you can always bring one in we will give you a free California native one to have in your garden so that way you can start over again and not have to feel bad about pulling out everything so make sure you bring it in roots and all and we will give you one for free one per household 
and make sure you tell your neighbors, your friends, your family, everybody you know who has that growing in their garden so that way they can come in and get the right one here. Um, you can buy them singularly like this or you can buy them in our beautiful butterfly boxes so that way you have nectar plants as well. And you can feel good about what you're doing in your garden and we can bring that population back up to a healthy level. That's what we're really striving for here. So there's all kinds of fun things going on. Make sure that you check out our Facebook page and our Instagram page. Also sign up for our email list. There's all kinds of great information. You'll get all kinds of beautiful videos there, all kinds of pictures about what we have going on here at Rogers and you'll be the first to know about the things we have going on because a lot of times some of the things that we advertise will sell out so that way you won't come in and miss out on some of the fun things we're doing here at Rogers. Thank you so much for tuning in. Be well, be safe, and happy gardening. Bye.